Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a short stop with a short stop. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about comfort zone. In the Cincinnati Reds, uh, they had a player by the name of Pete Rose. He uh, came up uh, in the mid-60s as a second baseman. Later in his career, he was asked to switch to third base, and he did, you know, but he was getting out of his comfort zone. But lo and behold, after that, they asked him to switch to outfield, and he got out of his comfort zone again and went and played in the outfield. But the last couple of years of his career, they asked him again to switch to first base with the Philadelphia Phillies and the Montreal Expos. And he did it without any type of whining or moaning or groaning. Uh, he, he just wanted to help the team. But he was willing to get out of his comfort zone. Then if we look at the New York Yankees, uh, he had a player by the name of Alex Rodriguez. He had originally signed with the Seattle Mariners and then he signed a free agent contract with the Texas Rangers and then he eventually signed with the New York Yankees but he was a shortstop his whole career but the Yankees had a young man by the name of Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez was uh, able to get out of his comfort zone and go to third base and play the position very well for many years we have the story of a man by the name of Jonah. If we look at the whole book of Jonah, Jonah was told by God to go and preach in the city of Nineveh uh, that the people were willing to repent. But Jonah didn't want to because he despised these people. He, he literally hated them. So he, he decided to get on a boat and go to another country and try to escape. But there became a storm and the people thought that he was a jinx and uh, they threw him off the boat. And a large fish swallowed him and kept him in his belly for three days. And then Jonah finally repented himself and said he would go to Nineveh, and he did. And when he preached there, there was literally hundreds of thousands of people that repented. Have you ever known anybody that you didn't like? But are you willing to tell them about God and get out of your comfort zone? If Jonah can cause hundreds of thousands of people to repent, then you can cause one person to repent by preaching God to them. Then we have a man by the name of Ananias. In Acts chapter 9, God told him to go into Damascus and tell the apostle, well, his name was Saul at that time, but he told him to tell him what he needed to do to be saved. And if we look in verse 11 of Acts chapter 9 and following, it says, And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire of the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And he has seen a vision of a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But now listen to verse 13. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard for many about this man, how much he has harmed and did to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. Ananias was afraid of Saul, and he didn't really want to go. But yet he got out of his comfort zone and went to Damascus and laid his hands on him. And in Acts chapter 22 and verse 16, he said, Why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? And Paul became a New Testament Christian, but he also became... Uh, an apostle and he preached to many people but Ananias got out of his comfort zone he changed his routine and he went and did what God told him to do a couple of stories that I would like to tell you there, <clears throat> there was a person in our congregation that, that their grandmother passed away and when the funeral came nobody from the congregation came to the funeral and she was hurt miserably uh, hurt that none of her brothers and sisters came to the funeral. But she, she took it another way. 
uh, she said, I am never going to let that ever happen to another brother or sister of mine. If there's a funeral, I'm going to make sure that somebody is there from our congregation. And I thought that was a, a very uh, great way of taking that and trying to do something good and not trying to do something bad out of it. There, there was another time that another elder was telling me about a congregation in Alabama one of their members was having a uh, operation in the hospital and there was about 15 members of that congregation that was down there in the waiting room waiting for her to get out of the operating room so that they could talk to her or make sure that she was okay but there was another man there that wasn't a member of the church and his wife was being operated on also and he got to talking to the people from the church of christ there and he said, is this a family member of your all's? And all 15 of them said no. Wasn't even a, a relative, but it was their brother and sister. It was their sister in Christ that was there. But this man said, you know something? That's the kind of church that I want to be part of. And this man ended up coming to their congregation and visiting. Then he ended up studying with them, and he became a member of the church. And that's all because of people that were not blood related to this lady, but they came out of concern and love and care and compassion, and they got out of their comfort zone. Are we willing to change our routine and get out of our comfort zone to try to do something for God each and every day? If we're involved so much in other different aspects of life that we're not giving God any time, then we need to change our routine and wake up every morning and say, first of all, what am I going to be doing for God today? What are you doing for God today and every single day of our lives? Sometimes we need to change our routine. Sometimes we need to get out of our comfort zone. And I think we all can do that. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.